I'm Alden Darby, former Arizona State Sun Devil, and you are now tuned in to the Harris Highlight Show. Go Devils! To you live from beautiful downtown Phoenix at the beautiful Arizona State University. This is the Harris Highlight Show, episode number 14. Today is going to be another fun episode. We're going to be talking about the latest coaching changes in college football, as well as the latest Heisman odds that came out, and our way too damn early top four for the upcoming season. But guys, we're going to start things off by talking about the latest coaching changes. Well, the Charlie, Charlie Strong one, I guess we're going to start with that one. I love that move. South Florida was a good team this year, and I think they just got even better. We all, I think we all agreed that Charlie Strong got the raw deal at Texas. He, I think he still needed one more year, especially with the way the recruiting was going on. But South Florida, it's, it's a shame that Marlon Mack, who was a stud running back, is leaving. But Quentin Flowers, that quarterback they have, he's a stud. And Charlie Strong, we've seen it years, years ago, he can recruit well in the state of Florida. So I think for South Florida, this is going to help the program tremendously, and they're, they're slowly on the come up again. I think it's going to help the, progr- uh, the program tremendously, like you said. South Florida had a really good year last year. They won their bowl game, if I'm not mistaken. But um, I think they're just in too small of a conference to get real national attention, and I think that, uh, I mean, you might see them at the 20 to 25 range toward the end of the season in the, uh, in the college football rankings, but I don't think they make any more of a push than that. I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. Charlie Strong, I think, is – one of the most versatile coaches in college football. I mean, he, he isn't purely offense, purely defense. He's one of the coaches who is involved in every aspect of the team, which I love in a coach because the one thing I hate seeing is when your team is on offense, they're marching down the field. Your head coach is sitting over there with your defensive players on the huddle on the sidelines, not even knowing what's going on. And Charlie Strong is one of those guys that is always involved in the game and always has been involved in the game, even if he, his team doesn't have the best record, doesn't have the best team. He's still a great coach, and I think this is a great hire for USF. I think, like like Brady said, we all kind of agreed that he got the short end of the deal at Texas, and it was unfortunate. Was it the time for him to go? I, I, I think it should have. If the move is going to be made, it's going to be made after the season. That's my opinion. But I think South Florida's ability to swoop in on Charlie Strong, I think that's an incredible move on their part. I think they're only going to start recruiting a lot better. Recruiting can only go up for them. Um, I, I like the move, and I think it's a good move for Charlie Strong with the way things ended at Texas to go here and, and seek out success, which I think he's going to have. And then the next popular move was, uh, of course, Lane Kiffin going to FAU with a head scratchy move. Um, Lane, I mean, you know, money talks, but I think, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't he getting less money yep. to be the head coach at FAU than he was to be the assistant at Bama? He is, but the one thing is he wants his own program, and this mm-hmm. is what he gets here. He has the ability to build up this FAU team who's been, I would say, absolute utter garbage for the last however many years. But Lane Kiffin, who has proven a good offensive coordinator, not a great head coach, a decent recruiter, but we're going to see how we can do with this FAU team. In most situations with coaches, you see them start with a low job and work their way up. Lane Kiffin's one of the only people I've ever seen that started from the top and just worked his way down. From an NFL job, didn't do so great with that, to being the USC head coach, really screwed that up. He was a good coordinator like he proved to be at Bama, but then he takes a job at FAU to be the head coach. I get he wants his own program and his own job. He wants to be a head coach somewhere, but if I'm him, I would have stayed at a program like Bama. I think Blake and I can both speak from from personal experience with Kiffin that the dude's not a good head coach. And also, really quick, and, you forgot about what he did to Tennessee. Yeah, he <laughs> he. Ba- I mean, at, at the time, I was very happy to see him come to SC, but what he did to Tennessee was was not cool. I mean, he uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but he had the press conference as soon as it was a done deal. He was out that night. He was out the night it happened because he turned around their program, and as soon as things start looking good for Tennessee, he bails on them. So as an SC fan, I was like, you know, that's kind of messed up, but 
welcome to SC. First year at SC is trash. Second year is awesome. And his next few years are trash. So goes to Alabama, has success. What I'm thinking with him is he had no success in the NFL. He had a little bit of success at Tennessee. Let's give him 30% success at USC. And then goes and succeeds at Alabama. All the places where he's had like good success, winning national championships, putting players at the next level, they've all been when he's an offensive coordinator or a quarterback's coach. He did it at SC in the 2000s. He did it at Alabama this, these last few years. Yes, I think he's ready to be a head coach again, but I, I just don't understand the move for him. You're going from being the offensive coordinator at a school that's going to compete for a national championship the next six years. Let's just assume that they're going to be in the title race for that long because they're incredible. And instead, you're going to a team that, let's be real, I would say half of the college football community is not very familiar with. Uh, people probably don't even know what FAU stands for. And he's making less money with a program that is not good. Do I understand that he wants to be a head coach? For sure. Do I understand his move to go there? Not really. He's taking a cut in pay, too. I don't understand. You don't mind me moving on. One I definitely want to touch on is P.J. Fleck going to, Mich- going to uh, Minnesota. At Western Michigan, had a 13-0 and regular season, just fell short against Wisconsin in their bowl game. And when you really look at their team, his only big, really big-time player was Corey Davis. At a Big Ten school like Michigan, or why do I keep saying Michigan? At a Big Ten school like Minnesota, who went 9-4 and four and beat Wazoo, who's also a very talented team, I can't wait to see what he can do at a Big Ten school. I like that you brought that up. That's a very underrated signing. I mean, like you mentioned, Western Michigan. I couldn't name another player other than Corey Davis, and that team was good. So now, like Minnesota, Minnesota was 9-4. and four. They were a good team and I was surprised they beat Wazoo in in the San Diego Bowl but I think he's gonna I think I'm not gonna say it's gonna be like what Tom Herman did with Houston but I think what he's gonna do at Minnesota like it but it's tough though being in the Big Ten but I could see Minnesota winning 10 games this year maybe even 11. I think we need to talk about one more for sure and it's let's go Pac-12 and I think we need to talk Mm -hmm. about California. Sonny Dykes out Justin Wilcox in so when you guys heard that Sonny Dykes was being relieved at Cal. Was there anyone who you thought was going to come in? I was. My, the first thought that came to my mind was, do we have to see less miles in the Pac-12 now? That's <laughs> my thoughts exactly. Well, we should see less miles in the Pac-12, but as the offensive coordinator for ASU, that's what it should be. But, hey, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. But um, I, li- I like that move with Cal. Um, Obviously, they're losing, you know, the quarterback, they're losing their best wide receiver. So their offense, I don't think it's going to be as dominant as it was last year. But, you know, Cal, Pac-12, every team is competitive. Every team can put up a fight. And with a coach like this, I feel Cal just maybe got a little better. It's interesting to say because this is a defensive coach now coming into Cal. He was the defensive coordinator at USC and was awful. And he was the defensive coordinator at, what, Wisconsin? Was it Wisconsin where he was? It's... Whoever, where I think it was Wisconsin, and they had a good defense. So now coming into Cal, which has for years been a bear raid offensive team, then then this is a team now that's going to be focused more on defense. I'm thinking. Yeah. Staying in the Pac-12 really quick. I want to talk about what Oregon did, taking South Florida's former head coach, taking Willie Taggart. Um, he turned that program around. Ten and actually eleven and two with their bowl win. Oregon, and he's gotten some good recruits out there in uh, Eugene. So Oregon, will they make a bowl game? We'll have to wait and see. But they definitely got an upgrade with their head coach. I think so, too. I think that, I I mean, let's be real. I think USC and Washington are going to run the table next year in their respective divisions in, in conference. I think they're, without a doubt, the two best teams. I think teams that are probably going to be getting better include Arizona State, include Arizona, include UCLA. But in the North, I think there's one team, there's only one other team that's going to be in contention, and it's not going to be Stanford, it's not going to be Wazoo. I think it's going to be Oregon. I don't think they're going to be able to compete too much with or against Washington, but in conference play, other than when they play UW, I think it's a team that's going to be able to get a lot of wins. I think it's a great move for Taggart. I think he's got a chance to make some huge strides this year, and with a signing like McTaggart, I think Oregon's looking up for sure. I'll tell you this. I got to watch uh, Justin Herbert in person. And what he did to the Arizona State defense was was just ugly. That says absolutely nothing. Yeah, though. I know. <laughs> but he tied the Pac-12 freshman passing record in a game. 
on the dot on the yards, 480 yards. But it was against Arizona State. But, but still. it still says something. It, it, but it's, it's impressive, but it doesn't mean... It doesn't matter if we're the worst defense, whatever. Oregon did a tremendous job. And not to mention, they're having a lot of their draft-eligible players returning next year. So they're, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. But those were pretty much all the major coaching transactions that have recently happened. We went over the Ed Orgeron one, the Tom Herman one. So good to see, and there's still plenty more to come. Also, Chattanooga got a brand new head coach, so watch out for them. Well, so the latest Heisman odds came out today, and uh, a very surprising name was at the top of the list, and that's Oklahoma's Baker Mayfield, starting out at 11-2 to 2 odds. Now, I don't know about you guys, I like Baker Mayfield, but I was quite surprised to see him leading the Heisman frontrunner race. What do you guys think? I mean, I wasn't that surprised. The other finalists for this year's Heisman, you have Lamar Jackson, obviously, who won it, but D.D. Westbrook's gone, Deshaun Watson's gone, Jabril Peppers is gone. So unless Lamar Jackson repeats, which I don't think he will, considering the second half of his season was not great, I'm not surprised at all to see Baker at the top of that list. I think the whole reason he even came back to Oklahoma, he's two reasons. He wants to win a national title, and I think he can come next year. And he wants a Heisman, and he can do it. I'm not surprised to see him at the top of that list. I think there's nobody more deserving. Yeah, I'll tell you this. Just You said Lamar Jackson probably won't repeat. But remember, last year he opened up at 100 to 1 odds at the beginning of the season. No one counted him in. Jake Browning last year opened up at 80 to 1 odds. I think he could uh, be a potential Heisman winner as well. I think if we're talking about the best passing quarterback in college football from last season, Lamar Jackson's not in the conversation. I don't think Jake Browning's in the conversation. I don't think uh, Sam Darnold's in the conversation. I think you look at three people. And one, Deshaun Watson. We talked about that last week because he was the best passing quarterback, which is why he won our award. Then I think you have Patrick Mahomes because how does this guy put up those numbers? Additionally, I think you have Baker Mayfield. Those top two passers are gone. There's one more proven winner, one more proven leader left in college football. Lamar Jackson's incredible. Is he an incredible quarterback? No, I think he's an incredible athlete, just in general. But if we're talking about a leader, the most valuable player, the best passer, I think it's Baker Mayfield. So I'm not surprised. Could this year be the year we see another running back win it and maybe Bo Scarborough? Yes. I mean, the bus, the truck, whatever the hell you want to call them. I mean, I'll tell you this. <laughs> After Alabama won the national championship last year, and Derrick Henry obviously left for the draft, I remember reading an article saying, take a look at Alabama's new running back for next year. And I start reading about this guy named Bo Scarborough. And they have these ridiculous numbers saying he's benching 445, he's squatting 580 or something ridiculous like that, and his 40 time was like a 4-4 or something like that, given that this guy's an absolute monster in terms of size. So I'm thinking, wow, this guy's going to tear it up. He starts the year injured. He had a slow start. I was thinking, you know what? Maybe he's not really what he was projected to be because he didn't do so much. And then Washington comes around. Oh, my goodness. I think this guy is going to have an absolute breakout year next year. I'm looking at this list, and some of the notable, or the ones that stood out for me, first of all, JT Barrett at 6-1. to one. He's the second favorite. I, I think that's way too high for him. After that performance he had against Clemson, ooh, yikes. I, I'm not too high on him. Um, Lamar Jackson, obviously the Heisman winner, being third. I don't think he can repeat. I, after we saw him in the second half, I don't think that's going to happen. I'm, I'm bummed about this one. Sam Darnold, 9-1. to one. I think I told Josh like months ago, and this was like... Maybe November, I said, I don't care what you're saying. I'm going to take a lot of money, and I'm going to put it on Sam Darnold to win the Heisman next year because I knew that he was going to be like a 50 or something to one odds. But then the Rose will happen, and now everyone knows about him, so he's a 9-1. to one. So I'm kind of bummed about that. But I remember you were talking about a run, or I think Brady brought it up, a running back winning the Heisman. Well, the highest one right here is 10-1, to one, Saquon Barkley at Penn State. I like that one a lot. I think if anyone's going to win the Heisman from a running back, it's either going to be Barkley or it's going to be Bo. We saw what Barkley can do in the Rose Bowl. He was pretty special, and we'll see how well, he uh, how he fares next year. But, um, yeah, other than Scarborough and Mayfield, I think the other two you have to look at, at least in my opinion, going into next year, were this year's two Rose Bowl quarterbacks and Trace McSorley and Sam Darnold. Those have got to be my four. Really quickly, I just want to bring up this one right here. It's the, I think, a seventh or eighth highest favorite one. At 12-1 to 1 odds, Josh Rosen. <laughs> so that's a... Uh, 
Shut up. That's a pretty. That's not happening. That's a pretty bold that. prediction right there. Especially considering guys like Mason Rudolph, Jalen Hurts, and Darius Geis. Darius Geis, another running back sleeper for next year. How are all three of these guys behind Josh Rosen? I mean, sure, he had some injuries last year, but even still, he has some Thanks. major work to do. Good thing Spencer's not here for this episode if, of the show. <laughs> If if I had to choose right now, like we're not gonna get into our Heisman predictions, that'll be weeks ahead. But if I right now, if I had to have like a sleeper pick who I would choose, like if I'm going to Vegas and I have a hundred bucks, I'm gonna put it on. I'm putting it on Mason Rudolph at twelve to one. He's coming back, which is with with an already pretty good team at Oklahoma State. His star wide receiver James Washington, who was one of the top five receivers in the country last year that no one talked about, he's returning. So, like, and we've mentioned it before, Oklahoma State, they're just one Hail Mary away from potentially fighting for that last playoff spot. So I think Mason Rudolph, watch out for him. But, you know, the, the rest of the list rounds out. I mean, you got Nick Chubb at 25-1, to 1, Luke Falk at 35-1. to 1. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But it's always fun to talk about the guys. One final segment before we hit the Q&A, and that is our way to damn early top four. Now, who wants to go first? Brady raised his hand, so Brady, you may go first. Way to really top four. No specific order. I'm going to rattle them off very quickly. Alabama, USC, Ohio State, Florida State. I like those. Lyle? I'm going to go Alabama, USC, Penn State, and Oklahoma. I'm going to say Alabama, USC, Oklahoma, and a lot of questions around this one, but I'm going to go with Ohio State. All of ours are actually pretty similar. Uh, number one, i got to go with Bama. Until, I feel like until they can prove that they can lose two games in a year, they're going to be the best team. Number two, got to go with USC. Number three, I'm going to go with Oklahoma. And number four, I just actually made a last-second change about 10 minutes ago. I'm going to put Penn State there. Penn State there. But I got a few teams I got on the outside of my list. I got Ohio State, Michigan, Oklahoma State, Clemson, and Florida State. I originally had Florida State at number four, but I changed it for this reason. Week one of the season, Florida State and Alabama face off with each other, which is going to be a, a great game. So... I think Alabama takes that game, and Florida State's going to start the season 0-1, and I think Florida State sometime during the season is going to lose another game. So with two losses, I don't know if they can crack that top four, but they'll be a good team. Yeah, and like we touched on earlier, DeAndre Francois, as great of a talent as he is, definitely has some growing to do, and playing Alabama in your first game is not exactly the way to grow as a player. He's going to be expected to have a playoff-like performance in game one of the season. In a neutral site, which is Atlanta, which is not neutral. Site. Not neutral in at all. the new stadium, which is going to be badass. But guys, are there any other teams you think that can make a run at the top four? Or pretty much all those ones I listed are just set in stone. Well, I have Ohio State and Michigan on my outside looking in, but oh, yeah. you can't write them off in any way. All Jim Harbaugh and Urban Meyer are known to do is win, 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 and even if both those teams are losing some of their guys. They're only going to bring in more top recruits to fill in those roles. All right. Well, that's the best part. This is our way too damn early top four. And who knows? In a few weeks, they can be different. So we'll have to wait and look back. You know what I should do is I should go back to the very first few podcasts and see who we put for our like top four playoff teams to see how off we were. Because I'm sure aside from Bama, who knows what our picks were like. But Brady, it is... yours didn't have Clemson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they never had, they never they, they never had Clemson in those ones. Brady, it is time for the QA, so if you want to go get those questions up and ready to go, let's begin. Hit the refresh button, see if we have oh, more comments. And there, there's an IU question. Oh jeez. Oh exciting. And we have 104 questions to go through. Well, let's see how many we can do. Let's begin. Alright, I have a I have a really good question. This one comes from Aprendas. Your logo is a Cardinals logo. Not the football team. All right, you say you'll always hear, quote, next year's quarterback class is better almost every year. Is that actually true this time? I feel it actually is. I feel, well, especially for this year, I feel all the quarterbacks in the draft are not NFL ready. They're good quarterbacks, but not NFL ready. Next year, ooh, we're going to have Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, Jake Browning, Mason Rudolph. I'm just talking about quarterback, like quarterbacks, like true quarterbacks. Um... I mean, the list goes on and on. 
I think next year, like how this year was supposed to be the year of the running back, I think next year's the year of the quarterback. Can any SEC team dethrone Alabama in 2017? If Darius Geis has a big year, maybe LSU. Other than that, not as of now. Um, I mean, I can see, like, Georgia. I mean, Georgia's been getting some good recruits. Tennessee's been getting some good recruits. Maybe one of those teams, but uh, it's... Alabama's just on a whole nother level, so I do not think that anyone could take him down. I think uh, a game against LSU is going to be a huge game for them next year. Uh, Ed Orgeron has officially gotten the job now, so I, I think that's huge for LSU. I think it's a motivation booster. I think they're going to be going wild in Baton Rouge next year. If there's anyone that can take down Alabama, I think it's either going to be LSU or Georgia. Mercer Week 12. <laughs> Do you guys think Western Michigan will do as well this year as they did this past year? Not a chance. No. I mean, I think I think they'll probably win maybe seven or eight games, but like I said, they're going to start the season off with an L at USC, and the rest is just going to take care of itself. If you could compare Reuben Foster to a player in the NFL, who would it be? Let's go current player. I'm going to say Ryan Shazier out Ooh. of uh, from the Steelers. I was going to say Bobby Wagner, but I think Shazier is a better comparison only because Shazier is a little bit more athletic and cover tight ends a little bit better. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say Jadavion Clowney. Yes, I know Clowney's a down defensive end, but their athleticism is very similar. Granted, Clowney's like, what, 6'4"? Yeah. I like the next one, too. Do you think that Notre Dame and Michigan State bounce back from last season? I think they – well, I mean, it's hard to – get any worse than what they were this season but i think they'll bounce back i think you can expect probably around like seven to nine wins for both teams i think michigan state a, a bounce back for them I, I see them winning i would say a seven and five season maybe eight and four and and, and lyle in terms of notre dame I, i'm sorry I don't, I don't see it happening i, I really don't i think the team until is they going, get a new coach until they get a new coach recruiting is not going well for them right now like I had said, I had said this a lot first semester. Sometimes there is this pick that is just a sexy looking school. And right now, Notre Dame is not a sexy pick for recruits. Every time I seem to turn around, they lose a recruit. So, what's his name? Uh, Elijah. Wait, turning around. Elijah Hicks decommitted from Notre Dame and 15 minutes later committed to Cal. Um, but, um, I mean, especially with Kaiser going to the draft, you got their new quarterback. His name is going to be Brandon Wimbush. He's a dual threat. I mean, we'll see what he can do, especially with Tommy Reese as his new quarterback coach. <laughs> Jesus, what a dumb move. Yeah, it was interesting, but eh, I, I'll give him seven wins for next year. I'll say seven and five. Who will be in the Big 12 championship game, and will they make it to the playoffs? Well, now that the Big 12 has a championship game, I think it'll help them and the conference for the playoffs. And I, like we mentioned earlier, I think Oklahoma comes out of the Big 12, and yes, I think they make the playoffs. I think it's going to come down to Oklahoma. No I think it's going to come down to Oklahoma State and Oklahoma, and that's going to be a pretty damn good Big 12 championship game. I think whoever wins that game is probably going to earn a spot in the top four. All right, speaking of divisions, like you said a second ago, Josh, should the Big 10 divisions be redone? Well, they used to be legends and champions, champions or something like that. And now it's what east and west. So no, <laughs> I, I like what they are now. It creates a great rivalry and a great uniform schedule. What I think needs to be done are the SEC divisions. Yeah. Those things are completely off. Like you have all the powerhouses in one, and you have all the crappy teams in the other. Who do you think will go number one in the draft? I think I, it's, I know we're going to cover a lot more draft talk later as we get closer, but number one as of now. I mean, it's pretty hard to pick against Miles Garrett. Yeah, I feel if you're the Browns. I, I would personally go with Miles Garrett, but if they pick Jonathan Allen, I would not be upset with hey, that either. Which team has the toughest conference schedule this next season? So now for this one, I think only really Pac-12 has released the records. I'm going to be completely biased on this one. I think ASU has oh, yeah. the toughest schedule, not only in the conference, but in the country. Well, the, I mean, despite them being at home for these games, they play Colorado, UW, and USC three weeks in a row. I mean, they are doing them no favors. I, I mean, I, th I think, all bias aside, the last couple years, I think it was easy to say that SC had the toughest co uh, conference schedule or schedule in the Pac-12, regardless of what year it was, if you look at the past few years. But this upcoming year, Arizona State, like with Lyle said, three good teams, three weeks in a row, all at home. <laughs> Thinking about it, it's kind of it's it's interesting because I 
personally think Arizona State is going to be a bowl team next year. I think they're going to be a heck of a lot better than they were this year. But then you think about conference start play. Start the boom bus. Yeah, start, they're, they're, they've been recruiting very well the last couple weeks. But, I mean, when you have game, I don't think Colorado is going to be as good, but when you have USC and Washington at home two of three weeks, that's pretty crazy. Just listen to this six-game stretch really quick. At Stanford, Washington, at Utah, USC, Colorado, at UCLA. Oh, Alex Perry, you better be ready to go, dude. But it's okay. We end the season with Oregon State and Arizona, so that's okay. Well, that means absolutely. Yeah, I know. It doesn't mean us. anything. Is Chattanooga considered favorites to be in the playoffs after getting ranked the 161st best recruiting class? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, 164, you, that's just a number. You can't let that distract you. What happens on the field is not about what, what's, what star you are, what number's on your jersey. It's about what's in your heart, okay? And we what saw that. What numbers on your jersey have anything to do with it? It has hey. nothing to do with anything. It's what's in your heart, okay? And we saw that against Alabama. Hey. So Chattanooga is coming next year. LSU, watch out. September 9th, Chattanooga, September 9th. LSU. Don't sleep. By the way, you can pick up your Don't Sleep on Chattanooga posters, stickers, shirts, and pillows at the Harris Highlights Merchandise Store. What team is long overdue for a national championship? I'm going to say either Nebraska or Oklahoma, I feel. I, I, I consider long overdue maybe like 20, 30 years. Okay, so not like a USC. Yeah. I'm going to agree with you and say Oklahoma. I like that Oklahoma pick, Blake. I Thank like you. That. I'm going to say Nebraska. Or maybe even like Michigan. Yeah. I mean, you know, Michigan. Yeah. How could Michigan they, not they have a long, ASU's long, long overdue. I saw some stat there. ASU's never been ranked first. <laughs> ever. <laughs> They've never been ranked first. Ever. <laughs> really? Yeah. Do you guys think Michigan can make it to the playoffs next year? Yeah. yeah yes, sure. but they need to beat Ohio State and Penn State, which is going to be tough. Milton Spate needs to learn how to pass the ball, too. He played with a dislocated shoulder for half the games. All right, how about the first 10 games when he didn't have a dislocated shoulder? Yeah, they were pretty damn good. <laughs> All right, here's, here's a great question. What past powerhouse who have fallen off the map, Miami, Nebraska, etc., have the brightest future, excluding Penn State and USC? I like Miami. They have a pretty good recruiting class they've been getting the last few years, and aside from Brad Kyle, even... They have some pretty good talent there. Um, I, that's my pick. I like that. I'm going to go with Miami, too. I think Mark Wright's a really good coach. I think Miami's looking up. I, I, I like Mark Rich at Miami, but I think... Uh, I kind of want to say Nebraska. I, I like that Nebraska pick. Um, I'm going to stick with the Big Ten. But I'm going to say Maryland. Maryland is on the up and up. Uh, I think they have a great recruiting class. They have dope jerseys, that's they for damn do. sure. But, but I think Maryland is one of those teams that has just slowly been getting slightly one game better every year for the last couple of years. I'm not saying they're a playoff team. I'm saying they're a Big Ten championship team. I might not even say they're a bowl team, but they're getting better. I okay. think people would be surprised to look at the past greats that Maryland has had. I think people would be surprised to see the names that are on that list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, now I think we could make this a whole segment on the next episode. Which I'm saying now, Blake, we're doing this on the next episode. Guys, do your research. I'm going to propose a question to you now. We're going to talk about it later. Best uniform from the entire season. Well, I mean, I got two in my head. One being bias. The ASU jerseys they wore at Oregon, those were just amazing. And then you got to go with the uh, Air Force jerseys that they wore earlier in the season as well. Those were, whew. With the shark helmet? Yeah. You, you took my ASU one. Yeah. I think we could do a full, almost like what uh, you guys have seen Uniswag doing. They've done, broken it down by best D1, best FCS, best military appreciation, all that stuff. So. And, and if we're shouting out Uniswag, let me give you a shout Josh. out and let me tell you that nobody likes those blue Oregon uniforms except for whoever runs your page. No one likes those except for you. That's all I'm going to say. Or just the Oregon jerseys in general from this season. All right. Well, here's your question. Uh, with the Daytona 500 coming up, you guys should introduce a NASCAR-related segment. Um, no, but no. the one thing I'm going to say from this past year was the football game at Bristol Motor Speedway. That was, cool. that was a great implementation uh, and the crossover between the two sports. <laughs> if, if Blake was Florida's quarterback, would they have won the national championship this year? I mean, maybe not, maybe not winning the national championship, but I would have, I would have, 
I would have put up some good numbers against some of those teams, and I would have led us to a bowl game. Like, I've seen you run away from j me when I'm chasing after you. Could you imagine what someone like maybe a Miles Garrett would be chasing, you chasing after you? Him? It's even a question. Like, like if you want to see though. Blake's athleticism at work, just come to the gym every day with him when he posts his stupid Snapchat stories. <laughs> All right, who do you guys think is the best quarterback in this draft? I think Deshaun's the best quarterback, but most NFL ready, I say Trubisky. I agree with Blake. Most NFL ready, the one who I think will do the best in in a NFL that is changing to a dual threat quarterback system. I think Mitch Trubisky is gonna sort of hold that back and take over the style of play like a Tom Brady, a Ben Roethlisberger, uh, one of those guy kind of guys. I swear to you, this this isn't bias, and I'll go more and we'll go more in depth. Through. Uh, with it when we do our NFL draft stuff, but I still think outside of the decision making that Kaiser has all the tools to be a good NFL quarterback. All right, so our, our winner of the Harris Highlights Bull Pick'em asks us, I know Tennessee is like a joke again for the two millionth year in a row, but how do you think it will be fixed into a good football team once like they were in the late 90s with Peyton Manning? That's the thing. Tennessee, they have the talent to be good every year. They just find ways to blow games. This year, they were lucky and they were winning games, but I mean, I, th I think they're there. I think they have what it takes. It's just can they just get it done, which is something they've been lacking the last few years. When do you think Alabama will not be in the college football playoffs? TBD. I say when Nick Saban retires. Which will be never. He'll be coaching until he's like 85 or 90 years old. Like Joe Pop. How will Georgia do next year with the amazing recruiting class and returning starters? I think they'll do Good. really well. Good. I say 10 wins, especially with Jake Easton only getting better. And Nick Chubb returning. He, did, the only reason he's returning is because he's pissed off from the Georgia Tech game. Oh, yeah. Which is, I, I love that. Good for him. Out of the teams that struggled this past season, which do you see being able to turn it around next season? Michigan State. Stole the words out of my mouth, Lau. Arizona State. Eh, probably Michigan State, too. I hate to say it, but I think UCLA. UC, I, I, let me touch on that. I think UCLA turns it around. I don't think they're competing in conference play, though. I think, I think they're eight or nine wins. I think they're. Uh, I think that's a lot for UCLA. I think they're six and six, oh, they have seven a pretty and five. Good recruiting best. class. Well, thanks again for all the questions. I think it was 105 or so was the finale, and that's 108. only 108. And that's only like an hour and a half. The video's been live, so once again, thank you. Um, we'll be back again next week. Still trying to figure out what we're going to be talking about, but it'll be a great show as always. If you have some merchandise that you need, well. Then he'll head on over to the Harris Highlights merch store. Brady, take it away. I want to give a shout out to the person from Chicago who bought merchandise. Really? Yeah, I didn't tell you guys that. Someone from Chicago, I'd probably say the third best city in America. Behind what? New York Seattle. and LA. New York. Seattle. New York and LA. I don't know if I'd say best, but I would say it's the third largest. Largest. <laughs> <laughs> One of the top Holy cities goodness. in America. What did he buy or she? Stickers. Oh, nice. Four stickers. Which you are so loud. Which kind of stickers? One of each. Really? Yeah. Wow. Well, random person from Chicago, you rock. I actually got my notebook today, and it is good. I'm already taking notes in it. So. Are you, though? No, not yet. <laughs> but I will for my math class. So if there's anything you want, t-shirts, mugs, coffee mugs, leggings, anything. I'll, I'll tell you this. I was going through the store last night and showing my parents because I haven't seen it yet. And they were like, wow, all right, this coffee mug is really cool. So I think they might order a Harris Highlights coffee mug. I love it, I love it. Link is in the bio below. <laughs> Buy some Harris House gear for my brother's birthday. Oh, there you go. You might have to. As always, all of our Twitters are in the bio below. Talk football with us. Talk anything with us, you know? I like talking about The Bachelor, so if you watch the show, sign into the DMs and we can talk about that all night. That really sounded sexual. <laughs> um, and Speaking of sexual, <laughs> hockey fans, hit me up. Oh, God. Basketball fans, hit Brady up. Not Spencer. Hit Brady up. Seattle fans, hit up Lyle. As always, the show is available on SoundCloud. I don't know why you do that. What? SoundCloud. Hey, people listen, dude. And of course, if you like baseball, tune in to Inside Pitch every Wednesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern on blazeradioonline.com. If you're giving yourself a shout out, check out uh, our show as well. Brady and I have a, have a half hour show at uh, 
What, what time is it? 6.30. 6.30. It's Nine. called bottom of the six. They should have known that. 6.30, Arizona time. 5.30, West Coast. You guys are really childish. 8.30 on the... You guys... Stop playing patty cake! <laughs> 8.30, Eastern time. PlaceRadioOnline.com. <laughs> So what you can do, there's about an hour in between, right? So you guys no, show 30 minutes. Oh, yeah, no. yeah. So our between. show's from 6.30 to 7. You guys show's from 8 to 9. What you could do is take a couple hours out of your night, do some homework, listen to me and Josh, listen to the podcast, then listen to them. Perfect. Number one. 6 to 7.30, BO6, 7 to 8, Harris Highlights, 8 to 9, Inside Pitch. What better way to spend your uh, Wednesday night? Too much of us, they're never going to tune in ever again. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Too much of us might not be a good thing. Well... As always, thank you for listening. Give this video a nice big ol' thumbs up. And uh, we will see you guys next week. Bye. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye, everybody. Nobody hit it with a rock. <laughs>